Please, everyone, turn down cell phones.
that allow us all to occupy this space. Because we don't have to be here, and we wouldn't be here if it weren't for their efforts. Uh, we could be one of the neighboring communities. I'm not going to mention any names. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to call out the name of one of your Yellow Springs ancestors who helped clear a path for us all to be here. And I will pour libations and we can start that process right now. Faith Patterson. Faith Patterson.
Harvey and Martha Roberts. Uh, Sherry. Walter Anderson. Uh, Sherry. Brooke Truitt. Uh, Sherry. One more, last but not least. Fran Lewis. Thank you all very much and please welcome their spirits here as they join us. Thank you. coming here today. This has been a long time in, in coming. So many to thank, so much effort these last four years. I hope you know you help with this and this is your sculpture park. I want to just um, introduce myself. I'm Jerome Borchers. I'm the president of the Yellow Springs Arts Council and when Brian and Nancy Mellon came to us with this project, we had to we had to think a moment. Okay, this is a big project. But we're so glad we did it. Thanks to so many of you out there, the Willing Gaunt Sculpture Project Committee has come together monthly for many years to pull pull this together. We've got the site committee, and as you can see today, we're not there yet, but we're almost. And I do ask that we stay off of the plaza today. In a couple of weeks, we'll have this done. You can come back and get close-ups with Will and Gaunt. But for today, we really need to stay, stay back from it. So I appreciate your cooperation. You'll have a good look at Will and and I hope, I hope you're, you're um, excited about it. Without further ado, I want to <clears throat> bring Cheryl Durgans back up here. She's our project manager for the Willing God Project. Thank you, everyone. This is a celebration. Come on, y'all. So, one of the best experiences that I've ever had professionally has been working with the Willing Gaunt Sculpture Project Committee and Site Committees. And what I want to say about that is that it was a really amazing process in which people really came together over the ideas. We didn't have to placate egos. We didn't have to facilitate um, a lot of disputes or anything like that. People were really committed to this project. And I really believe that the resulting work and the plaza and what we're going to experience as a community moving forward, this is our community, this is our plaza, this is an opportunity for us to congregate and to be in memory of lineage and legacy. So without further ado, I want to introduce the Willing Gaunt Sculpture Project Committee. And I am sure 
that I have left a couple of people off, and so I'm going to ask Jerome to kind of fill that in because I came on a year after the project started. Okay. So when I call your name, if you could please stand. Paul Graham. Bob Houston. I know you were all around somewhere. Need some acknowledgement. Dr. John Fleming. John Gudgel. The Venerable Richard Lapides. Sculpture Committee, but then also was part of the Site Committee. <laughs> Nina Ellis. John Hudson. Lisa Krieger. Anthony Mon, who was also on the Willing God Sculpture Project Committee as well. We have Valerie Blackwell Truitt. Special thanks to Village Council here for really, really working with us to find some money to do this. I want to thank Mayor Canine for the legacy, understanding legacy, the proclamations for our community service awards, and just the support, the constant support. The Arts and Culture Commission. And one more, I just have to say a personal thanks to all the landscapers, Nadia Malarkey. Because we could not have done this without her. So this is really, yeah. And I just have to say Johnny Burns again real quick. Because, yeah. Just because. Thank you so much. Yes. So, now we have the master of history. <laughs> Dr. Kevin Magruder, who... Since he arrived on the scene about nine or ten years ago to Yellow Springs has just been an amazing part of the community. Um, and an amazing part of the spirit of Willingon. We the, the tours that Project 365 has done, his role as a professor at Antioch College. 
college, um, his role at Central Chapel AME, his role in terms of Home Inc., uh, YS Home Inc., his authorship, his understanding of issues, his participation on various choirs, um, all of this becomes an important part of why we're here today. Thank you, Cheryl, and thank you, everybody who is here today. Uh, as several people have said, this has been a long time in coming, but it's uh, a great day. Most of us in Yellow Springs probably first became familiar with the surname Gaunt in connection with Gaunt Park, the public park on West South College Street. The park takes its name from Wheeling Gaunt, the man who, months before his death, in 1894, donated nine acres of his land, which he then rented to a farmer, to the village. With that donation, he stipulated that the village continue to rent the land and that the rents be used to give an annual donation of flour to widows in Yellow Springs, something that continues to this day and now includes widowers and sugar. Um, <laughs> But why create a statue or a sculpture of this man in a very public place in the village? A few years ago, as the Wheeling Gaunt Sculpture Committee began meeting to plan the various elements that have led up to this day, we discussed distinguishing this sculpture from other public sculptures by creating educational programs based on the many lessons to be learned from Wheeling Gaunt's life. Today I'd like to spend a few minutes speaking specifically about how we can learn about the culture of Yellow Springs from the way it welcomed Wheeling Gaunt. Much of what I know about Wheeling Gaunt is due to original, extensive research done by the late Phyllis Lawson Jackson. Yes. My friend, who wrote one of the first articles on Wheeling Gaunt decades ago, but also to Stephen Deal, who expanded on that research when he and his wife Nancy Mellon became owners of Wheeling Gaunt's former home on Walnut Street. And most recently to Brenda Hubbard, who earlier this year published the full-scale biography of Wheeling Gaunt called Legacy of Grace, Musings on the Life of Wheeling Gaunt. A, a brief biographical sketch of Wheeling Gaunt is both straightforward and remarkable. He was born enslaved in Carrollton, Kentucky around 1812. To place him in historical context, he was a contemporary of Frederick Douglass. We believe that Gaunt's father, John Gaunt, was also his owner. Wheeling Gaunt was separated from his mother at a young age. We know that in the 1840s, he purchased his freedom for $900, and also the freedom of his wife, Amanda, for $500, and that of a boy, Nicholas, possibly his son, for $100. In all likelihood, John Gaunt allowed his son, Wheeling, who he could have freed, to rent out his services and also allowed him to keep the wages earned and purchase his freedom, most likely based on a prior agreement. As a free man, Wheeling Gaunt remained in Carrollton, Kentucky, and made a home with Amanda and Nicholas. He also began purchasing real estate, several buildings in downtown Carrollton. In all likelihood, observing the security, status, and power that land ownership gave his father, Wheeling invested his savings gained as a free laborer to root himself in the community with his ownership of property. In the early 1860s, at the beginning of the Civil War, he sold all the Carrollton property and moved to Yellow Springs. In this village, he immediately continued working as a laborer and invested his savings in real estate. He was a generous person, at one point selling at least two homes to people for $1. He made a $5,000 donation to Wilberforce College. At the end of his life in 1894, he owned the entire northeast side of the block 
of Walnut Street between Dayton and Cliff Streets and other properties in the village, including the nine acres of farmland on South College. At his death, his will provided for his second wife, Elizabeth, and his sister, Louise. The rest of his Yellow Springs real estate was left to Wilberforce College. The motto, not what we have, but what we share, has become linked with Wheeling Gaunt's life story. While we can see the motto as a good description of how Gaunt lived his life through the way he shared his substantial wealth with Yellow Springs and with Wilberforce, I'd like us today to consider the ways that that model also applies to the various ways that Yellow Springs, a small community that was beginning to thrive in the 1860s, in welcoming Wheeling Gaunt and scores of other free African Americans in the years after the Civil War ended, shared housing opportunities, friendships, and economic opportunities with them when other surrounding communities would not, as Bomani was alluding to earlier. Wheeling Gaunt's 1860s purchases of real estate are not as routine as they sound. Some towns in Ohio were hostile to black people, and some were even known as sundown towns, where black people could work during the day, but by the time the sun went down, they had to be gone from the town. Even in towns where black people were able to live, some people refused to sell certain properties to them. Gaunt's first purchase in Yellow Springs was property on Walnut Street, sold to him for $1,300 in 1864 by Frederick Birch, the treasurer of Antioch College. In Yellow Springs, Gaunt became a member of Central Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church, which was formed in 1866, a few years after his arrival. I'd like to acknowledge the current pastor of Central Chapel, Reverend Mornay Mayer, who I believe is here today, and if you are, if you could, he's, he's back there. While Wheeling Gaunt isn't noted as one of the founding members of Central Chapel, it's believed that Gaunt's friendship with Daniel Payne, the first president of Wilberforce College, and EME College may have been one of the factors in his decision to locate in Yellow Springs. Churches are more than places of worship in most communities. For Gaunt, new to Yellow Springs, Central Chapel most likely became a way for him, Amanda, and Nicholas to meet other black residents and develop a network of friends with whom they could socialize and on whom they could depend. When Amanda died in 1889, Wheeling Gaunt donated a bell to Central Chapel in her honor. We don't know if Wheeling Gaunt was a member of other organizations in Yellow Springs, but in 1887, the year that Ohio required all schools in the state to desegregate, he ran for the Yellow Springs School Board. He didn't win, but the fact that he ran suggests that he had a network of associates in Yellow Springs, perhaps white and black, who had encouraged him to run. Yellow Springs wasn't a utopia. The actual implementation of desegregation of the schools in this town was delayed for a year by some white parents who were against having their children attend schools with black children, but also by some black parents hesitant to send their children to schools with potentially hostile white teachers and students and fully aware that the black teachers at the segregated schools would lose their jobs with desegregation. In the fall of 1888, black and white children began attending the Union Schoolhouse. Not what we have, but what we share. By welcoming Wheeling Gaunt, Yellow Springs benefited from his resourcefulness and his generosity. The same welcome, though, was extended to other black families during Gaunt's time, including the Bennings, the Cordells, the Perrys, the Gudgels, the Hulls, the Adamses, the Lawsons, the Blackmans, and many, many more. Many of their descendants continue to live in Yellow Springs. As with Wheeling Gaunt, the village benefited from their resourcefulness and their generosity. While they may not have been a position, in a position to donate land to the village, they donated their time and talent on the school board, on village council, and in a range of other leadership positions. Wheeling Gaunt's will makes no mention of the boy Nicholas 
whose freedom he purchased for $100, suggesting that he may have died before Gaunt. If he had lived to raise a family, perhaps the Gaunt name would still be among these later generations. Not what we have, but what we share. In what ways are we today continuing to be a welcoming community, sharing what we have? Just because we were in the past doesn't guarantee that we will remain that way. We have to be intentional about it. We have many initiatives underway today working toward this goal, some of which I'm involved with, as Cheryl mentioned, such as Yellow Springs Home Inc.'s development of housing that is permanently affordable to low and moderate income people, the courageous conversations that facilitated discussions among diverse groups of people, facilitated by Lynn Kramer, the soon to be distributed survey by the inclusive and resilient Yellow Springs Coalition, led by Tony Dosick and Alexandra Scott, that seeks to identify contemporary barriers to our welcome. The Race Project, hosted by WISO's Basim Blunt, and many other initiatives. There are many communities that are as prosperous as Yellow Springs. Some are gated communities that welcome those of high incomes. Some have unspoken rules preventing access to people who aren't white. Others are more open as long as you aren't an immigrant. They have much, but they are hesitant to share it with others who are different from them. Who knows what opportunities they miss out on by excluding ambitious migrants like Wheeling Gaunt was in the 1860s, looking for a place to set down roots and share their prosperity with the wider community. There is a vibrancy in Yellow Springs that has made us unique. And that is our, our tradition, comes from our tradition of welcoming a wide range of people to share what we have in this village. In doing so, we benefit from their gifts of their time, their talents, and their treasures. And we exemplify the model associated with Wheeling Gaunt not what we have, but what we share. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Magruder. A lot of powerful information. Next, we're going to have the World House Choir. Many of you are familiar with uh, the wonderful job they do. Kathy, thank you so much. They are going to, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Magruder. That was enlightening. Appreciate that so much. Good afternoon, everyone. We are the World House Choir, a community choir that is based in Yellow Springs and draws its members from throughout the Southwestern Ohio region. We perform music that motivates and inspires our community toward justice, diversity, inclusion, and equality as we strive for peace and build our web of mutuality. We are grateful to be invited to this unveiling ceremony of the Wheeling Gaunt statue, a man who continues to teach us here in Yellow Springs through his saying, not what we have, but what we share. As we advance along the path toward peaceful tomorrows, fueled by our truth telling, we want to acknowledge that we are gathered here today on the unceded lands of indigenous people. We honor and stand in solidarity with those whose land this truly is. Those from the past who died here and whose spirits abide here those who are still alive today and who make their homes here, and those who were wrongfully displaced from this land and who, along with their descendants, have made their homes elsewhere. May we all come to know the wisdom of living in right relationship with our Mother Earth and with all the beings that share this sacred space with us. The World House Choir had planned to do a medley of spirituals because we know Wheeling Gaunt probably 
sang spirituals, but we've decided to sing just one spiritual to start. And then we're going to invite you to stand and sing with us a hymn, um, Lead Kindly Light, which is from a hymnal that Dr. Kevin Magruder made available to us from the 1890s, um, uh, an AME hymnal from the 1890s that Wheelingaunt probably sang. So we're gonna ask you to join us. That's our second piece, Lead Kindly Light. We're gonna start out with Walk Together Children, and that's exactly what we need to do. We need to shout together, pray together, sing together, walk together to make Yellow Springs everything that Wheelingaunt um, provided for us and showed us the way. Thank you. Oh. 
gosh, we're having some trouble with feedback or, uh, so, where's my Tim? Tim, okay, thank you. Everyone, um, we distributed some yellow and some white copies of Lead Kind Delight. Are they out there? Some of you, oh good, yes, great. Um, we'd love you to join with us in this hymn that we know was in the AME hymnal back in the 1890s. So please, why don't we stand, everybody might want to stand, if you're able and willing, um, so that we can get some air generated and sing this beautiful hymn, Lead Kindly Light. We're going to sing in four parts, so we're going to give the basses their pitch, and we're going to give the tenors their pitch, and the altos and the sopranos their pitch. Sing in four-part harmony if you can. but I've never done one in 360 degrees. <laughs> wow, this is wonderful. And I want to thank Drs. Roma and Magruder for their music. They're always inspirational to hear and feel the choir, on, especially on a day like this. 
And for your historical summary of the life of the man we're here to honor and celebrate today. I'm starting my comments with, with a quote from the Xenia Gazette of, from 1894. And on May 15th, 1894, according to the Xenia Gazette up the road, Wheeling Gaunt was one of the best citizens of our village of Yellow Springs and will leave a record and example of his fair dealing and benevolence which would be well to be imitated by those who are left behind. He used the word community a lot in what he said and I've heard the word community a lot here today which is wonderful especially looking out and seeing this view of all of you who took the time to come here today. Now for the official whereases. Whereas, much has been shared within the village about the life of Wheeling Gaunt during the last few years, from a booklet created by Mills Lawn second graders, to public presentations, to Brenda, Brenda Hubbard's book, Legacy of Grace, on the life and times of Wheeling Gaunt, and whereas, now the Wheeling Gaunt Sculpture Project has resulted in a life-size bronze sculpture honoring this local philanthropist who moved to Yellow Springs in the early 1860s. Whereas this project has brought together various community organizations, such as the Yellow Springs Arts Council, Arts and Culture Commission, Historical Society, Chamber of Commerce, Community Foundation, James A. McKee Association, the 365 Project, and Yellow Springs Heritage, in addition to many other collaborators and individual financial donors who made this project possible. And whereas Yellow Springs artist Brian Mon and his artist son Anthony Mon brought the sculpture from vision to life-size likeness. And whereas, henceforth, the sculpture will stand as a reminder of Wheeling Gaunt's legacy in our village, that he overcame true adversity and through ingenuity and determination was able to not only thrive himself, but to help so many others in his community along the way. Now, therefore, in recognition of all the organizations, funders, project leaders, and artists who made this project possible. As mayor, I hereby declare today, October 2nd, 2021, as Wheeling Gaunt Sculpture Celebration Day in the village and township of Yellow Springs. Thank you, Mayor. Can I? This is a community. This is a community project. And Pam has it exactly right. We need to carry on what Willing Gaunt taught us. It's not how, what you have, but what you share. Thank you, Pam. At this time, I'd like to invite Lisa Krieger say a few words on the Yellow Springs Arts and Culture. Hey everybody, community. It's my honor to be a part of today as we unveil a bronze sculpture of Wheeling Gaunt that's going to be the perfect welcoming gateway to the village of Yellow Springs. Yeah. I'm here to represent the Village Arts and Culture Commission. We as a group have been very supportive of this project since its onset and are so happy and excited to see it coming to this point. Um, the Arts and Culture Commission supports the mission of the Village of Yellow Springs in facilitating, promoting, recognizing that public art adds value by providing educational opportunities, activism, economic development, and improved quality of life. The commission navigates and connects our creative community and the arts community with the village government. 
It's not what we have, but what we share. This motto exemplifies what I've learned about Wheeling Gaunt and also describes the spirit of so many people that have shepherded us to this moment. Join me in recognizing sculptor Brian Malm and his son, Anthony, who stepped in to complete the bronze after his father's passing. We all wish that Brian was here today. But I certainly know that you join me in feeling his presence with us, as well as the presence of so many ancestors whose names were called as we began this ceremony. Also, I'd like to recognize the Yellow Springs Arts Council, the members of the committee who did the design, the Wheeling Gone Sculpture Project Committee, the vision of Nadia Malarkey, and the site committee, the many donors who gave very generously, and last but not least, a special shout out to Mr. Johnny Burns and the crew of the Village of Yellow Springs. They worked tirelessly so that we could be here together for this unveiling. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. We have the good fortune today of having an unexpected guest. We're very pleased. The First Lady of Ohio, Fran DeWine. Thank you, it's so good to be here today. You know, Mike and I are both children of Yellow Springs, and Mike's father was actually born in the house just across the corner there. So we're happy to be here. You know, as kids, um, I remember, I, I grew up on Fairfield Pike, and I remember riding my bicycle to Gaunt Park when the new pool opened. And I think to every child in Yellow Springs, Gaunt Park, everyone knew Gaunt Park and they knew it was a good place because there was always a lot of fun there. So that's sort of how we first all knew about Wheeling Gaunt. Um, my grandmother, Anna Strewing, uh, lived here and worked, uh, worked up, did a lot of work at the Senior Citizen Center. And, um, you know, no one appreciated the flour and the sugar that the widows got more than my grandmother. And you know, she made chicken and noodles and homemade bread that she sold at the bazaar at the Yellow Springs Senior Citizen Center every year. And she taught me how to make the noodles and the bread too. So when she got to the point where she could not uh, bake anymore, she always gave me the flour and sugar and I made my Christmas <laughs> things too. Mike so much remembers when his grandfather died and Andy Benning came to the door at his grandmother's house to bring the flour and the sugar. So it's just an incredible tradition here in Yellow Springs and one that Mike and I will never forget. Um, Mike, would, Mike wanted to be here himself today, but he's at a funeral, but um, I'm just happy to be here to share our memories and so happy to see all this. I have to tell you, Nadia Malarkey is also doing my garden at the governor's residence and it is gorgeous, so you all have to come up and see it. So thank you. Thank you, Fran. A lot of people have grown up here. We, my family, moved here in 2000. And the first face I met when I was thinking about moving here is a man I'm going to introduce. He dropped what he was doing at his office and proceeded to take us a full tour during the, through the high school. I'd like to welcome to the stage John Gudgel with the 365 Project. Early this morning, I was on the bus with kids as we were going to a cross. 
cross country meet in Springfield. And so as we came by the soon to be unveiled statue, the kids looked over and they said, Mr. Gudgel, who's underneath the statue? And what's that all about? And so I said to the kids, have you ever been to God Park? Well, they all have been to God Park, whether it's for the fireworks, swimming, softball, soccer, or as their insane track coach, cross country coach would have it, running up the hill. But they wanted to know about who was willing God. So that gave me the opportunity once again to educate our youth about wheeling God. As Fran alluded to, we all know about God part, but do we know about wheeling God the man? This sculpture will serve as a testimony to educate not only local citizens, but all those who have a sincere interest in Yellow Springs. Pam, I worked together with you as an educator for 25 years and we would always hear stories of kids who copied homework. As a witness to what I have on my paper, I showed Lisa Krieger what you started to read. He was one of the best citizens of our village and will leave a record example of his fair dealing and benevolence, which would be well to imitate by those who are all that left behind 1894 Zini Gazette. I wrote it before you had it typed up. But with that being said, in today's vernacular, Wheeling God would be referred to as a goat. No, not a billy goat, because in today's vernacular, goat means greatest of all time. So one of the things in that quote from 1894, approximately 127 years ago, for those of us who are doing Mills Lawn math, in that quote, he said, which would be well to imitate by those who are left behind. We are the ones that have been left behind, and it's our responsibility to imitate and continue the legacy of Willie God. Let's continue the mission, let's fight the good race, and let's not give up the fight. I was told I had to do an infomercial. For those of you who would like to purchase Wheeling God books, materials, whatnots, and shirts from the 365 Project, just go over to the table and see Deborah Henderson. Thank you. Job well done. Thank you. Okay, you know, it's so hard with masks can't see the smiles. We're hoping there's a lot of smiles happening out there. We're just 15 minutes from seeing our willing God. So stay tuned. At this time, I'd like to bring back Cheryl Durgens, and she will talk about some of the education. You see all the filmmakers, you see everybody starting with um, Elias Kelly in this process. I see Cameron, I see some representatives, I see uh, a lot of people here. Historical record is important, so we need to start supporting and funding so that we have history that we can look at and refer to. Just want to give that shout out before I start. I'm missing folks, but I just want to say that's so important. So, uh, the legacy and lineage is kind of where I'm going with this. And this is a celebration, but it's also a community wake-up call. So, back at the beginning of the process, um, Dr. Kevin Magruder helped a group of second graders, probably now fifth graders at this point, on a project-based learning project. 
uh, developed by Mills Lawn school teacher Mikasa Sims. So let's give her a shout out. <laughs> Whose mother was my preschool teacher talking about legacy. So I want to talk about the fact that this book, as a result of this project-based learning project, second graders came up with a Will and Gaunt ABC book. And this is an important kind of juncture in terms of how we talk about education and processing on all levels. So the second graders learned about the life and times of Will and Gaunt, and the project produced a wonderful children's book that breaks down a complicated moral issue into its most basic and stark narrative. It is a very serious book, but it is done with the heart and mind of second graders. I say this because I want to focus on a section of the book that highlights the purchase of his freedom a little bit more, because I believe it is an important tie into what is happening in our community and events currently. You know, the easy stuff, new schools, property values, basically the mortgaging of education, you know, the simple stuff. So what makes Yellow Springs unique is that we have a historical record that indicates an alternative way of engaging land ownership as, as exemplified in the life and legacy of Will and Gaunt. His remarkable life makes it somewhat easy to generate 21st, second, uh, 21st century social media sound bites. However, his experiences are more nuanced and complicated. Gaunt managed to transcend the most brutal and oppressive economic system of slavery and ensuing uh, specula speculation when he pur purchased his freedom and that of his families. So I want to kind of just say really quickly some of the historical information, and I'm not going to go into real super de details because we want to see the sculpture, but half the book, The Half Has Never Been Told, Slavery and the Making of American Capitalism by Edward Baptist. I'm saying that very slowly. It's a must read. There's a clear distinction between God's humanitarian-based business structure and economic system of slavery upon which our very own mortgage system is based. Bundling enslaved people, our ancestors who were captives into securities had benefits for the slave owner. It decreased the risk for the lender while increasing the number of lenders willing to loan capital to landowners. An increase in the cotton production resulted in sky-high profits. But then there was a crash. It was the Panic of 1836 when the cost of cotton dropped steeply in the world mount, mount market due to oversupply. So, this tragically resulted in another round of inhuman sales that forced thousands of enslaved Africans away from their families to cover the debt of their enslavers. I say this because Willing Gaunt's mother was sold away from him at the age of four, probably right around this time. The financial crisis caused a panic that lasted and into the 1840s. I am making historical comparison to our times because it is the kind of financial speculation, and if it sounds remarkably similar, think of the subprime mortgage crisis of 2008, and you're right on target. As residents of Yellow Springs, we are inextricably linked to the legacy of Will and Gaunt. Our ancestors offer us lessons on quote unquote flipping property towards an honorable purpose that can heal and provide sustenance to our community. As we turn our attention to the business of the day, we are fortunate to have the documentation of his life to look upon for guidance. From the fate of Mills Lawn property to the development of housing more inclusive than exclusive to people who want to live and work in our community, we can choose to create alternative economic models that make it possible. Every time anyone in this community needs inspiration for innovative thinking, for a new way of conceptualizing life here, visit the Willing Gaunt Sculpture, meditate here. It's right here for us. It's a reminder not to leave anyone behind. 
as we build new homes and new schools. He left a legacy that extends generations. He's amongst us in ancestral spirit, actualized in the physical. At the end of the day, when we examine our plans for Yellow Springs as a community, one question should sit at the forefront. The words taken from a play written by the great and mighty poet, Sonia Sanchez asks, uh-huh, but how do it free us? To which I should add all of us. This sculpture is a marker. There will be tours that will be guiding us here to this moment. We'll have educational processes through the 365 Project. This is the gauntlet, y'all. Let's do better. Thank you. So before I um, move, <laughs> I need to introduce another amazing community member, and that is Professor Emeritus Brenda Hubbard, who is going to talk a little bit about the book that she wrote, uh, Legacy of Grace, The Musings on the Life and Times of Will and Gaunt. Uh, her family has lived here for over 50 years, so I'd like to really kind of ask all of us this legacy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. What an honor to be here and to see all of you. I am so very pleased and so very blessed to be here. My mother was a recipient of the Wheeling Gaunt gift for 11 years before she died. And um, she said to me something that spurred me forward and made me curious. She said, I don't know much about Wheeling Gaunt, but he was a former slave and he had to have suffered greatly. And whatever possessed him once he achieved his freedom to do something kind for others was inspirational to me and that's what she told me and she said well, after your father died I felt like giving up but here was a man who had been through so much and yet he gifted me with the flour and sugar uh, every year she said why he did it I don't know but there was something unique and special about him and of course we know that to be true don't we he was a very special man and I started off writing a, a coming of age historical, uh, excuse me, a, a coming of age fictional story. And I did historical research about Yellow Springs and I came across Wheeling Gaunt. So I said, oh, I gotta read a book about this man. He's good. I mean, he's, got, he's done so many things. He's so interesting. So I looked for a book. There was no book. So then I said, somebody should write a book about this man. Well, be careful what you say, right? Seven years later, I learned how to write a book uh, about Wheeling Gump. And thank God for Dr. Magruder helping and advising and so many other people in our community and in our nation. Uh, it was a, a, a tremendous effort. Then I started to think, what will I do with the proceeds from the book? Because, you know, I'm blessed to have a retirement fund, so I don't need too much money. What will I do with it? And we don't really make a lot of money off books anyway, unless they become New York Times bestsellers, which could happen if you buy the book. It's right over there. Um, so I thought, who would Wheeling Gaunt want to see the story of his life donated to? Who would he want? And I thought the 365 Project was the obvious choice. <laughs> So when you buy this book, you are helping the 365 Project. I have participated in their courageous conversations. I have gone to their meetings. I have been blessed to have grown up in a community that has given me so much in my life and taught me so much about social responsibility. And I'm so glad today that we keep talking about social responsibility. I began writing this book when Donald Trump was elected, and it was a big motivator for me that we must always fight for right 
and tell the stories and empower others to tell their stories so that we never forget the true legacy of this country. Thank you very much.